Thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar uh, for Infor Laws and System Planning and Essential Updates uh, to Consider. We've delivered this content uh, a couple of different times, but uh, tried to plug in the most relevant content uh, for you today and uh, keep it accurate, up to date, and uh, leave you with some information to take back to your organization and uh, hopefully some action items and uh, things to plan on. First, if you're not familiar uh, with Intellius, just wanted to cover a little bit about our organization. Uh, we are headquartered with, in Dallas, Texas, uh, and also have a, an office in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, we've been within the Infor space since 1999 uh, for some time, and are also uh, an Infor Alliance partner. Um, in terms of the services offered, um, full uh, technical services, uh, functional consulting, implementations, upgrades around uh, most all of the M4 products, um, starting with Lawson and then um, moving into Cloud Suite version 11, uh, financial supply management, HR talent, all those types of things, um, helping with the upgrades, implementation, uh, different services around uh, cloud uh, solution. And then we also uh, traditionally offered a number of software packages uh, that complement uh, both the Lawson system and now some of the Cloud Suite and version 11 uh, solutions in terms of benefit add-ins, uh, uh, job automation, uh, things like that. So the agenda today covering, you know, what's new, what's changing, what's important for you to know, uh, those key points. Um, I think you're gonna find, if you haven't already, there's <clears throat> everyone's gonna have at least one, maybe new action item they weren't aware of, uh, things to think about. And the goal is to um, have you thinking kind of strategically a little bit more long term around, you know, what is our uh, architecture, you know, in for ecosystem environment going to look like um, what, where do we want to be in 2 to 3 years and what do we need to do to support it? A lot of this is going to revolve around um, different uh, life cycle dates from both in for and all other 3rd party vendors that are part of the solution. Um, trying to put all those pieces together and help you come up with a, a plan, a roadmap um, to move forward and, you know. Have a stable system and at the end we'll, we'll open it up for question and answer i'd say the key updates that and we'll cover all the kind of dates and updates but the big ones i get questions about almost on a weekly basis are uh, windows server 2019 um, so this is going to be applicable to you for any you know you might be an aix customer you may be all Windows, um, but pretty much every M4 customer has some piece of Windows Server, uh, that, that component in their, their infrastructure. Um, so if you have a, a version, an older version of Windows, you know, there's going to be a call to action to update that and, and moving into Windows Server 2019. Um, same thing on the database platform. You know, if you're a SQL shop, um, upgrading to SQL Server 2019 on the Oracle side, you know, 19C, if you haven't already. Um, I get a lot of questions about Java. Uh, Oracle started charging uh, subscription fees for Java 8. Uh, so M4 is now certified uh, open source alternative in Amazon Coretto. You know, how can I take advantage of that? How can I move to that? I want to reduce my license fees to Oracle and not be paying for their version of Java. Talk a little bit about what it takes to get there. And then some updated ADFS support. I get a lot of questions around that. Um, do I have to use ADFS? And obviously, ADFS being a Microsoft technology also ties into the you know Windows Server uh, versions and all of those different types of things. But at, these are kind of the high level umbrella, big ticket items, if you will. I think you know what we're going to cover today, and what I'd be happy to you know go through in the Q and A is you know what does this mean? Okay, we have a goal of upgrading to Windows Server 2019, but there's all these other little pieces in the compatibility matrix and different environment versions and release levels and web sphere fix packs and all these types of things. So it's a lot of little um, activities that are required to get you to the bigger goal of upgrading the operating system or upgrading the database or moving to Coretto and picking apart, dissecting and understanding all the different dependencies and what's in the compatibility matrix and can sometimes be confusing. So we'll talk through some of that. Um, also, one thing to cover is I did kind of focus the core on the Lawson, you know, Lawson system foundation, Lawson applications, landmark, uh, left out some of the edge products um, just because, you know, not everyone's using all of them and try to keep this more generalized. Happy to answer questions on them, but a lot of the content is more geared towards, you know, your core Lawson system foundation uh, components.
So some of the key dates on infrastructure. Um, most of these have come and gone already. So if you have a red item here, um, you know, that's a, something you need to be taking action on Im immediately uh, on the Zenda support column. Uh, and then the black items uh, obviously have not come and gone yet uh, or you know, coming up soon um, and need to be addressed. Uh, so this would be kind of the last possible support date called out for each of these items. Uh, the biggest one for most customers is going to, and, and the, the, the Microsoft side, the Windows Server and the SQL tend to go together. Uh, but this is the big one that everyone's planning for. Um, if your Windows Server infrastructure is 2012 R2, um, you know, that's going to be end of support in October 2023. And what that would mean is that from Microsoft, and same thing with the SQL Server uh, 2014, which is what most customers are on, um, you know, when that date comes, you're not going to be receiving patches and fixes from Microsoft anymore. And obviously that leaves you vulnerable from a security perspective. Um, so the goal there would be to upgrade the operating system. Um, the next logical step from an import system perspective, you know, for Windows Server 2012 is onto Windows Server 2019. Uh, so if I would say pretty much every single on-premise customer who has Windows in their environment for Lawson or Landmark, is running Windows Server 2012 R2, or maybe something older, um, unless you've already gone through an upgrade, or uh, for some reason you implemented Lawson extremely recently, like in the last year. Uh, this is probably the version of the operating system that you're on. Um, 2013. So this date has kind of come and gone as well, but the old Mingle Foundation. This was a, an element of that. There's really no upgrade path for SharePoint Server. Um, there's a move into an entirely new product called M4RS, which we'll talk about. Uh, and then on the Oracle side, you know, the goal being getting to, to 19C uh, as the highest release level uh, from a database perspective. You know, on the software side, some key things that we've been helping customers with that some of these have come and gone. I, I would hope you've already addressed them. I leave them out here because I do have customers who haven't. Um, so if you haven't yet, you know, a few of these items are well. You should have. You should be doing this now. Um, so moving it to ADFS for authentication from LSS STS. Um, that was an initiative you know, that started back in 2019. Uh, Internet Explorer 11. You know most people aren't using that anymore, but that that is officially no longer supported, and, and some of the products will not work on Internet Explorer 11 on the newer versions. Um, Mingle 11. Uh, so that's Mingle Foundation. That is, uh, and it has been end of support for uh, about a year, I guess. Um, the directive there is to upgrade to M4OS, um, which is the you know Mingle 12, I guess, if you will. That's the unofficial product name for it. Um, but that's the, the new product stack, new technology stack, completely eliminates the SharePoint architecture and dependency. It's still a Microsoft-based technology. Um, you still need Windows Server and, and SQL Server if you're running it on-premise, but uh, you eliminate the SharePoint. Um, that's tied closely to this Microsoft Silverlight um, down here. And the other couple items, you know, Oracle Java 7, you're still running that. You, know, you should be moving to Oracle Java 8. Um, and the ADLDS, uh, ADDS channel binding, you know, this was something that was a big ticket item. A couple years ago, Microsoft came out and said, well, you need to make secure connections for LDAP binds. Um, we're going to break and stop supporting non secure connections. Um, they kind of backed off from that stance a little bit, uh, but still heavily recommend moving to a secure connection. So by default, all of these connections in your import environment are not secure connections. You have to take action and make additional configuration to secure them. Um, so going through that initiative is recommended, even though there's not really a, the last time I checked a hard date of saying, well, you have to do it by now. Um, they, they, Microsoft backed off of that and, and said, well, we recommend you do it and here's how you can enable it and enforce it on your own time. Uh, one that is kind of new um, that just got announced is the Crystal Server 2016. Um, so the, the current version of Crystal Server that, that uh, LBI uses and then potentially MSCM and the, the Lawson OLE DB connector for version 10 um, are dependent on. SAP has sunset that product at the end of this year. So the upgrade path is moving to Crystal Server 2020. So that's a relatively new item, but if you're using LBI, you know, it's definitely going to impact you. Wanted to call that out. Um, 
on this slide. <clears throat> and then the other big, you know, item is all this stuff kind of goes into supporting your core Lawson system. You know, the end of support date for that as of now is, is April 2026. Um, that's what Info is kind of committed to um, and is looking to lock in sometime in 2024, I would imagine. Uh, but that's the date for now. So working towards that, knowing that, you know, no matter what you do with all these other components we're talking about, um, big system as a whole is, is going to the same sustained maintenance um, in 2026. So what can we do uh, for our strategy? You know, these are the big things to focus on, um, understanding which ones are applicable to you, right? Because not everyone's an Oracle shop. Not everyone's a SQL Server shop or whatever that might be. You know, we may not run LBI, so we don't care about Crystal Server. Well, take all of those things that do matter to you, that are applicable to your organization, and understand what the loss of product life cycle is and what the compatibility matrix is saying about these things. So, you know, for example, uh, maybe we still have Oracle Java 7 on our landmark environment, and we want to upgrade that to Java 8. Well, really work through the compatibility matrix to understand what that means, because you're likely looking at a landmark 10 to 11 upgrade. And, you know, guess what? Landmark 11 doesn't support server 2012 or two anymore. So you're also doing an operating system upgrade. And then you're also doing a database upgrade. So a simple thing like I want to upgrade from Java 7 to Java 8, all of a sudden can snowball via the compatibility matrix and how things are certified into a pretty large upgrade project especially if you haven't been on top of the maintenance, right? Um, Internet Explorer 11, if you were still using that, well, the new version of Portal absolutely will not render and is not supported in Internet Explorer 11. So if you haven't already moved away from that, you're basically in a position where you can't upgrade without going through or take any patches on some of the newer Portal versions until you moved all your users to Chrome or Edge or things like that. So all of these do have some interdependencies um, and quickly do, kind of snowball and all tie together. And what we see is a lot of this ends up becoming, you know, a larger project or a larger initiative. So because of that, you know, we recommend start planning your info roadmap now. Um, <clears throat> you don't want to get caught behind where, oh, just to get this one patch in, now we need to do a, you know, massive upgrade project. And understanding that, well, okay, you know, we have until October 2023, over a year until Microsoft stops patching our Windows servers, um, that's a long time. Well, not really, because those projects take anywhere from three to six months on average, and you don't want to be going live in October. So all of a sudden, you know, to get the funding approved, planning, you know, uh, resources allocated, all of these things, really not that far away. So understand that these initiatives are rather large, um, are going to take time to plan, are going to take time to execute, um, and these deadlines either have come and gone or are quickly approaching, and you're not going to want to be in a position where, you know, something goes down, mission critical, payroll or whatever process in your production system, and, you know, oh, well, you got to be on this version of patch, and, well, you can't go there because, you know, you hadn't done all these other prerequisite steps, um, and you're not going to be able to take that patch. You know, so I would say action will be required, um, in your on-premise environment, regardless of when or if you move to V11 at this point. A lot of customers will say to me, well, you know, we're going to ride out Lawson forever, or, hey, we're already getting off of Lawson. We're going to this other system. Um, well, the reality is, you know, if you're not off of Lawson altogether and ready to shut the servers down by the time that date comes and goes, you're still going to have to do these items um, because you wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in a position where I'm running production workloads or have production systems running that are vulnerable from a security perspective, which you know all of these dates um, would introduce, right? If you're on a too old a version of the operating system, too old a version of Java uh, in your production environments, that's that's not something that's going to be on. So really, regardless of your deployment and where your future stands with M4 or not M4 or whatever, you know, if you're going to be running the system um, through 2023. All of these things are going to apply to you. And so with that, kind of think about where your roadmap is. Maybe, maybe you're going to leave in for it, or maybe you've already committed to Cloud Suite. Hey, we're going, you know, version 11, we're going Cloud Suite. We already started our project. Well, 
when are you going to be live and how is it phased? Because a lot of times with those projects, okay, well, we're going to do poor HR first, and then we're going to bring in finance, and then we're going to bring in payroll. And, you know, that's longer than a 12 month project. And so, even though you've moved pieces of your application, or maybe you're going to be live, you know, first thing in 2024, well, that's after some of these dates have come and gone. So, you're still going to need to do something, even though you're leaving the, the, the platform. I think it's also important to understand the loss and product life cycle um, because you may be certified and all good today, but a lot of people don't keep up with this. And so what you'll start to see is, oh, well, we're on LSF 1009 or, um, or we're on LSF 1008 or we're on whatever version. You need to understand, and this applies to kind of all of the technology components uh, and application components of, you know, what is the product life cycle and where do I fit? Where do I align against the most current version? And Infor is basically committed to this N minus two policy for priority one updates. So aside from all the other things we talked about, doing an analysis of your current versions where they stand and how they align against the latest release of the products um, is also very important because to me, you know, looking at this N minus two policy as an example, LSF 10 to 11 is the latest and greatest version you can get right now. A lot of customers are on LSF 1009. So N minus two is like two minus the current version. So 11 minus two is nine. So you're at the tail end of receiving any priority one updates. That means if M4 releases a new version of LSF 1012, you've now fallen out of the P1 window. I think that introduces risk and concern. So you think about things like the log 4J, uh, vulnerabilities that came out in our, earlier this year, late last year, I forget exactly, everyone was scrambling to apply fixes. You know, if you're on the tail end or out of the M-2 policy, you could be in a position where it says, well, you know, too bad, we're not, we're not fixing that version because you haven't, you haven't kept up to date. The other thing is, you know, some of these versions will be prerequisites. So they'll say, well, oh, you want to be on um, the latest version of MicroFocus COBOL compiler? Well, we've only certified that for the latest version of LSF. So keeping regular maintenance on these patching you know, schedules and cyclics and things like that is important and understanding where you are in relation to this N minus two policy um, will help keep you better, keep you in a position where you can um, take updates, support your system with um, less of an effort ultimately, because when we fall behind, what we see is that all of a sudden these become snowball, massive upgrade initiatives require a lot of time from our business users for testing, um, so on and so forth, all to just fix what ultimately was a, you know, a small problem. Uh, but to get this and that and another, um, and all these different interdependencies between the products, you know, requires a larger, much larger effort to you know, upgrade and patch the system. So in terms of a roadmap, um, you know, what does that look like? You know, things that should already be done or could be done now. Um, the, you know, the yes, uh, ADFS, Microsoft Active Directory Federation Services uh, implementation of that for your authentication, uh, the secure LDAP S uh, connections, uh, Tax Factory 11, most people have already taken care of, probably dropped this off. That was from last year. Um, upgrading M4OS. Uh, to M4OS from Mingle 11, replacing that, that SharePoint Mingle-based technology with M4OS. Find the latest versions of LSF and Portal. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Portal 10.1 user experience, it's uh, great, uh, much improved over what you got with your version 10 upgrade. Um, that's something that can be done with, you know, pretty minimal effort, and I think adds a lot of value to the business users. Um, same with Landmark 11 over Landmark 10, that is version 11, quote unquote, but you can still run that with your loss and V10 system. There's no change there. It's not, it's not version 11. It's just a upgraded version of IPA runtime environment and just introduces a lot new, a lot of new features in terms of administration, management, you know, capabilities of the, in the designer, the development tool, uh, all these types of things. And then the bigger ticket items would be, you know, upgrading your operating system, upgrading your, your, uh, database system, uh, this Crystal 2020 uh, initiative, and then, you know, Coretto 8. Uh, a lot of people are asking about, but that 
that kind of ties in with the Windows Server upgrade because that's the, kind of the latest platform that, that Coretto is certified on. But uh, moving into there, you know, allows you to drop the, the Oracle Java licensing uh, from your environment. And then from there, you know, you have a stable platform. That's the goal. This is going to be a lot of work, a lot of moving pieces. These are big projects. Um, but that's why it's important to understand your overall roadmap. You know, where are we going to be in three years? Where do we want to be? Um, what's the goal for our business users? What's the goal for our ERP? Some people say we're leaving. Some people say we're riding it out. Take it, you know, you're going to have to take it away from me, whatever that is. But knowing that the loss and end of life is, you know, 2026, you know, I like to tell people that if you go through all this, you can kind of ride it out into the sunset. If you will, you'll have a stable platform. It's the last big push. Um, and you should be able to, you know, Keep up with things with relatively minimal maintenance after after you go through all of these initiatives but i would encourage you you know through all of that to prepare and evaluate for your cloud suite upgrade you know ultimately there will be movement off of the loss in system um you know if you stay with m4 that's an upgrade to cloud suite and just really planning through that so there's some things you can do you know today to ready yourself for that to evaluate that and figuring out you know, where that's going to be because you know what, what the conversations we've been having with customers is, okay, you're telling me it's going to cost this much money to upgrade to Oracle or uh, Windows Server 2019. You know, had we known that, we might have gone to Cloud Suite earlier. You know, so just saying, well, well, we'll think about it next year or next year or next year, isn't a great idea because I think longer term, you're going to find places where, well, you know, we could have done this earlier and saved the business, you know, this amount of money or whatever. Um, so just, you know, it's okay to wait, but just think about it and make sure that's the right decision for your organization. Look at the big picture, look at your entire roadmap, look at the investments you're going to need to be making in the system to support it and, you know, what it's going to take to get where you want to be. You know, so that's what I'm saying. Just comprehensive roadmap, think long-term, think out through 2026. Um, where are we going to be? Where do we want to go? What do we need to do to get there? Um, and all of these pieces, you know, on the top of this are going to play a part in that. But there may be things you could pull out or, you know, change or move around depending on what your ultimate goal is with your ERP platform. So the biggest ticket item on there is doing the operating system upgrade. Um, so going to Windows Server 2019, um, you know, how do we do that? I put two items here and technically there's maybe three strategies. Um, so I would say, but, but I'll talk about why the third one's not on here. Um, we can do side by side upgrades. Um, so what that is, means is basically kind of like if you, if you were on version nine of Lawson or you're around, you remember the project kind of similar where we're basically building out all new infrastructure and we're going to reinstall everything from scratch copy over everything, all your data, your users, your jobs, your whatever, and move them into this entire new set of servers. Um, this is the preferred method uh, for me, um, but it is also more costly to, de to deploy. It takes more time, right? Because we're, we're building everything from scratch. Um, however, I like it because it allows for very clean parallel testing and the old and new environments. You know, when these are completely separate, we can say, well, these are going to be our new servers. They're not live yet, but they're all there and ready. This week, let's go ahead and run two payrolls. We're going to run one in the new system, one in the old system, and fully vet them out in a testing environment, user, user acceptance testing type scenario, um, without having to impact anything in production. Uh, so it gives you a really nice, clean, proven testing model um, to validate the new servers and the new deployment. It also gives you a very simple rollback strategy because if something goes wrong, all your old servers are still there and nothing changed, right? So we're just, we just go back to where we were. Uh, the in-place upgrade is the you know, alternative to that, kind of the opposite of that, is you say, well, we're not building out any new servers. We're just gonna upgrade the ones we have in place. Kind of like how you get an update on your iPhone, right? Oh, we're gonna update iOS overnight and then boom, you wake up and it has a new operating system on it, a new version of the operating system. That is potentially an option here um, the benefit of is there's no new servers, there's no new installs. So it's faster and it's cheaper to go this route. However, 
there's a very limited ability to run any sort of testing, right? Because if we think about an in-place upgrade, well, when we upgrade our production system, that's it, it's one shot. We don't get any testing on our production system. We just live with it and we <laughs> see how it goes, right? Um, so because of that, it has a very complex rollback strategy. If we figure out that, well, we screwed up and did something wrong, and you've already gone through a week of processing in the new system, you know, what do you do? Well, you're kind of stuck, right? Um, so that's the other option. The third would be to extend support with Microsoft. I have a lot of customers asking me about that. You know, oh, well, we can pay Microsoft to give us patches, security patches for Windows Server 2012 R2, and we'll be fine. And that's true to some extent from a Microsoft perspective. But what you'll see in like this Crystal Reports server, Crystal Server issue is a great example. Uh, Infor is doing this with Landmark 11, is to everyone else in the world, 2012 R2 is a dead operating system. So when Infor comes out with new products or uh, SAP comes out with the new Crystal Server 2020, um, Visual COBOL, different versions of Java, WebSphere, I'm just making things up, they stop paying attention to 2012 R2 and everything's certified for whatever you know, publicly is the, the latest supported version of, of Windows. Um, and so you run the risk of extending support where great, you're getting Microsoft patches, but guess what? You can't update Crystal Server, can't update Landmark, can't update Visual COBOL, can't update all these things because they don't support 2012 R2. They don't care that you're paying Microsoft money. They've stopped supporting that operating system because everyone else is supposed to have updated already. Um, so I don't like that option unless you have a real short runway left to get off of Lawson altogether. You know, hey, we're going to be live on January 1st, 2024, and we're going to be off of Lawson altogether on some new system. Then that might be an okay strategy for you, but it's definitely not a long-term strategy to pay to extend support, in my opinion. So with the server upgrades, we do recommend the side-by-side -side upgrade um, because of the enhanced testing ability um, and this, the clean kind of rollback strategy that it introduces and the flexibility that it provides in terms of the timeline, right? We can we could drag this out over eight months if you wanted to, build out all the new servers, give your end users a long time to test, um, nice and, and uh, nice pace testing scenario environment and go live, you know, when you're ready. Um, but generally we're seeing a timeline be anywhere from three to six months, three being the fastest. We, we've done them faster than that, but six, three to six months is where they kind of fall in. You know, about a month to that of that is the, the server build, the infrastructure build, the setup. Um, and then the, the remainder of that is going to be your different testing cycles. And that's why it's so variable is because every customer is different. They have different resource constraints. They have different, you know, business as usual activities. They have different things that will drive, you know, when can we get people to test and when can we go live? And that, that's where the variable nature of this timeline comes in. The average project cost, um, you're probably looking at a six figure, low six figure fee. Uh, and that's not just, hey, what are we gonna pay the consultants in to come do? That, that's part of it. Uh, that's a, a large part of it, uh, but you're also gonna have costs for, you know, potentially new hardware and infrastructure, um, doing all your new installations from the consultant, uh, doing your data migrations and then your full user testing cycles. It's gonna be an extensive testing cycle. It's gonna require a lot of resources and a lot of time um, from those resources to do testing. Uh, if you think about it, you know, we're completely moving the system from one set of servers to another. So all we wanna make sure all the interfaces run properly, people can log in, the security model is still the way we want it. You know, did we put all the pieces back in the right place? Um, so understand that it is a big effort. And that's why I bring it up with customers is, you know, it's, it's going to be a big cost of the business, both in terms of money and time. And so start thinking about this stuff now, because it's not something we can wait till, you know, next summer to think about, or you're really going to be, uh, I think, playing catch up with things. Um, the considerations with that, you know, like the business value, <laughs> this is a big one for the cloud suite upgrade. You know, what's the end of the day result of upgrading the operating system? Uh, to our payroll department. It's really nothing, right? They have a stable platform. That's great. That's more of an IT value. Uh, but from an end user perspective, they're really probably going to notice no change, right? Kind of like getting an oil change in your car. That's one of the downsides of this. You know, you have to do it. If you don't do it, you run um, 
it could be vulnerable from a security perspective in your system, from a support perspective with your vendors. Um, but it's not bringing a lot of and you know a lot of value to the business with how much time, effort, and dollars have been put into it. Um, you know, compliance mentioned that. You know, what are our support dates with our vendors? Um, and then any other non info licensing costs. So rolling up into that total dollar amount, you know, how much is it going to cost? You know, we have hardware infrastructure, but you know, licensing for SQL Server, licensing for Server 2019, licensing for Oracle 19C, you know, those also have costs. So how do those factor into to our upgrade? So the underlying theme was to continue to focus on also what's next. Like our future roadmap, where are we going and what do we need to do to get there? You know, ideally we hope customers stay within the M4 ecosystem, working at Cloud Suite. You know, so start to think about what you can do to get ready. Um, you know, M4OS and Portal 10.1 introduces the M4OS technology stack, which is part of the Cloud Suite offering. Also introduces you know, the Soho 4.0 responsive design. Um, sunsetting smart office, that product isn't required. It's not, it's not available in Cloud Suite, but it's also not required. It's cumbersome, it's, it's clunky. I don't really like it that much. Um, there's no reason to have it, but people love it who use it. Um, so starting to sunset that product in your own premise if you're using it today and replace it with these web HTML5 based technologies in Portal 10.1 and for us, um, getting customers used to that. And that's what's gonna be the user experience uh, within Cloud Suite. Upgrading to Landmark 11, again, that's the runtime environment for some of the Cloud Suite technology platforms. Evaluating Burst and understanding what you're going to do with your analytics package. Um, you know, LBI isn't, isn't part of Cloud Suite. There's other offerings with Burst and uh, In4BI and some of the embedded uh, reporting capabilities within the Landmark platform. Um, it's starting to become familiar with some of those new tools while remaining on your, your current platform. And then also doing a rice analysis, you know, to me, I assume most of the people on this call come from a technical background, but this is the biggest variable to me in all the cloud suite upgrade initiatives. And so how long is it gonna take for us to get there? Well, if you have 2000 interfaces, it's gonna take a lot longer than a customer who has a hundred because all of those are gonna have to be touched and changed. A lot of them will probably go away is what we see, uh, but some of them are definitely gonna say. And, uh, Understanding how many interfaces we have, the types of technologies they're using, their purpose, and kind of documentation that you might have today is hugely beneficial in understanding, you know, what it's going to take to uplift those to the cloud. Either can we retire them? It's no longer needed, deliver functionality, or yes, we're going to build this and use this new technology, and it's going to take X amount of, you know, of effort. Um, to do that, to replatform it. Uh, and that'll give you a good idea of what it's going to take to build, lift, and shift the, the technology components within your environment. <clears throat> so, for next steps, you know, all these things, a lot of different topics, and like I mentioned, can be somewhat complicated or convoluted with the way the compatibility matrix is laid out and, and seeing where some of those dependencies are. Um, but I think the big takeaway is to, to look at things that need to be done with your environment and start to build a strategic long-term roadmap um, for something that fits and, and is tailored to your specific organization's needs. Um, so that's what I would be happy to, to do. Um, schedule a meeting, work with me, um, talk through some of those things, answer any you know customer specific questions you may have, uh, but ultimately figuring out what your kind of custom tailored roadmap might look like and how we can help make your projects a success. That's the end of the content um, that I had. Uh, again, my name is Rob Flannery. My uh, email is on the, the slide here, so you can definitely reach out to me directly, but at this point, we'd be happy to open it up for uh, questions, either in the chat or if you wanna unmute yourself. Um, Caesar, it looks like there's a few. Different ones are ready. Chad, did you want, or Chandra, did you want to cover those? I don't know. We had one come in asking, is the Crystal deadline 2016 will be unsupported by December 22? 
or get on Crystal 2016 by then? Yeah, let me look at that real quick. Um, so it says the end of mainstream support uh, for Crystal Server 2016 is December 2022, and that customers are going to be encouraged to move to Crystal Server 2020. Um, I think I do see them now. Uh, we are currently running Lawson on 2012 Windows Server Machines. When do we need to be upgrading the Windows version? Um, I would start now. Um, like I said, it could be a six month project, right? And to me, if you need to be off of that platform by October of 2023, you know, I don't want to be live October 1st. I want to be live before that and think about things like, well, do we have open enrollment, right? When does that hit? Um, year end for our finance team, all these other things, all of a sudden, you know, this is a six month project and we have a small go live window that we can hit. You know, I would start now at least planning for it, understanding what it's going to take, um, budgeting for it because it's, it's up and coming. Uh, would LSF 1009 still work if you did an in-place upgrade of 2019? Um, I would need to look at the specific, I guess we could go through, I don't know how many people like look at the compatibility matrix, but, um, I can open it up and answer that question and kind of show you how I would look through it. So, on the M4 support site under uh, Lawson, and they have a quicker link to it now. I'm just used to the old way of getting to it. There's this compatibility matrix. Um, I think the LSF support is right here, right? So the way I would read this, this is page 15 um, for the Windows operating system. And so, okay, Windows 2012 R2, here's where you are today. You need to be on LSF 1009 or higher in order to sit on 2012 R2. Well, let's look at 2020, or excuse me, 2019, what's our minimum LSF? 10.011.3. So the answer to your question is no. LSF 10.09 is not supported on server 2019. Now, does that mean if you do that, everything's going to break? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Usually what happens is they'll say, all right, we're going to certify for a new operating system. And at that time, whenever we're doing our certification, we're just going to test on the latest version of LSF and the latest version of this and the latest version of that. That's their benchmark they set. But I wouldn't want to you know, I would want to follow the guidance here, regardless of if you could make it work in an unsupported manner. So the answer to your question is no. And that's why these in-place upgrades get tricky is it's not just the operating system. It's uh, LSF 1011.3. Well, if you're still in Java 7, that means you need to update to Java 8. Oh, and you have to update WebSphere. And you have to update the Visual Cobalt compiler. All these things start to you know, kind of snowball. And it's like, well, I think I'd rather just do this side by side, build out the servers, get the servers test you know, separately, and then cut over to them when we're ready because you know there is a lot to do with these in-place upgrades. Now they can be done. You know, if you're a single tenant customer, I think Infor is doing all of their upgrades in place because they are easier and they're faster, but they also control all the infrastructure and they know and can mandate customers to do this, this, and this, and this before they upgrade. And they have tight control over all the infrastructure. So it's a little bit of a different scenario. Generally, what we find is customers are not ready to undergo something like that. And it's easier to just do these as side-by-side -side upgrades cleanly, as opposed to trying to apply all these upgrades onto you know, existing infrastructure and then do an in-place upgrade. Um, let me find the chat. <clears throat> We had another one come through, Rob, um, with LSF end of life 2026, what are the upgrade options for an on-premise 
around that time frame? Um, well, if you're sticking with Infor and you're running Lawson today on premise, and again, you're going to stick with Infor, you know, you're going to go to Cloud Suite version 11. That is the supported upgrade path. And that the, the technical product names would be like HR talent or GHR, the financials and supply management. And that's where you know your your loss in HR, BN, PR, LP, GL, ARAP, PO, RQ, all those system codes, that's where you would go. Um Infor is not really selling that on premise anymore. I mean, I'm not gonna, there are certainly some on-premise customers, um, but I don't really think that's an option. And I think that's true of most of these. Vendors, you know, Workday, um, UKG, uh, Oracle. I mean, everyone SaaS, it's cloud. Um, and so I don't know that on premise is an option. Um, you'd be looking to, to upgrade to the you know, Enforce multi tenant version 11 cloud, whatever you want to call it. But that's something that could be done today. You know, so my opinion would be not to wait until the very end of time because the reality is. There's a ton of stuff you're missing out on. If you're a loss in customer and you've been on version 10 for a while, you know, they don't do anything with the product, really. They don't enhance it, they just fix it. Year end patches, you know, oh, somebody's broken, okay, we'll fix it. There's nothing new. On the newer products, you know, you're getting break fixes, you're getting patches, but you're also getting a ton of new features and enhancements that are relevant to you know, life today. From an HR perspective, I think of things like uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccination tracking. Um, they just did another thing with like, uh, I've had some customers who built customizations for around personal pronoun identification, all these types of things that when Lawson was built, these things did not exist, right? No one was really thinking about these things. They weren't relevant, they weren't important, uh, but they're never gonna put them in that system. And so there's all, these are just two minor, minor examples, but by keeping yourself on this legacy product, even if it's technically supported, you know, you're losing out on, on a lot of value, in my opinion, to the business. Um, I think it's worth looking at investigating some of the value, benefits, enhancements, features that the newer product can offer. And I think you'll find, oh, it does that now? Well, we could eliminate this other product we have or this other customization we did, right? You know, simplifies your architecture, improves, you know, use, mo mobility is another one, you know, browsing on your iPad, your phone, doing open enrollment on your phone, you know? Not possible in Lawson without extensive customization today. And maybe it works, but it's sloppy. You know, it's not great. Um, all these things are just included out of the box. So another reason to start thinking, um, or another angle to think about this from, aside from just the technical end of life dates from these vendors and keeping the system up and running. I didn't see any other. Any other questions? Does the WebSphere upgrade come into play on this? Um, yes. Uh, so you're still using WebSphere 855, but generally speaking, you're going to be taking a fix pack. Um, at a minimum. So it's not a major upgrade, but if you're on web sphere 8559, you know, be upgraded at 855, 18, or 20, or I forget what the latest one is now. Um how vulnerable is Java 7 really? Um I'd answer that two ways. Um, I think the log4j vulnerability can teach you that, you know, you never trust some of this stuff and someone's going to find an exploit and then we're all scrambling to fix it. Um, so it's hard to say, I'm not a Java expert. I don't know exactly, but there's definitely vulnerabilities in it, whether or not you'll be exploited, probably not, but who knows really to me, it's, <laughs> you cannot upgrade. Remember what I just said about the N minus two policy. On LSF 10.09, technically that still supports. Actually, they came out and said it, we're no longer supporting Java 7. So you're going to get yourself in a position where even if you're secure, you can't patch because Impor's moved everything to Java 8 and you're still on Java 7. So you're going to have to upgrade, you know, whether it's for security reasons or you know, 
some dependency down the road with the patch. Um, getting off Java 7 would be a big priority, in my opinion. And for did I should have put this on the content. I, I forget exactly what they said, but even within the 1009 LSF release, starting with the last CU or the next CU release model that you change to, Java 8 is required. So you're still on Java 7, you cannot patch LSF anymore, period, end of story. That's kind of what they're saying. Um, so for clarification, once we move to SQL 2019 and Server 2019, we are good until 2026. Um, in theory, yeah, once you upgrade, you know, right, well, I said ride it off into the sunset is, um, you know, that's the highest version you can go to now. And once you, you do that, you're looking at, you know, loss and end of support, like the whole product, not just the technology components. Um, but you'd have to look at the Microsoft compatibility and all these other things to see um, what that might look like. But as of now, all the things we talked about, these are the latest versions of SQL Server. You can, doesn't matter what Microsoft has out. Well, has out or Java. I mean, why, why can't I go to Java 11? Well, because M4 only certifies for this. So everything we talked about today is the latest and greatest that you can go to um, and is probably where you're going to be regardless of what these other vendors have because of the, the sunset date for the technologies you need to move off of. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Someone said, will the webinar be made public? Uh, yes. We actually did this probably six months ago, pretty similar content. It's already on our YouTube site. Um, maybe we'll publish this one too. But regardless, um, as an attendee or someone who registered, you'll get a copy of the content or a link to the recording. Uh, so you can come back and we already do have a version of this on you, our public YouTube site. Um, that was done however long ago, but similar content, just missing it. You know, the dates have come and gone, so the time frames are different, but generally speaking, it's the same type of content. Yeah, so loss in support is ending in 2026. Like that's you need to be off of it, is kind of what they're saying now. And the caveat with that is they say it's a tentatively planned, right? And we have two years to firm in that date. So by April 2024, they, they will need to have given you an answer whether or not they're committing to that date. And at that point, you know, there will be no more you know, patches or it's not a supported platform after 2026. That's kind of what they're committing to. Subject to change, they could push it back. They may push it back. I don't know. I don't make those decisions. I don't look for in for. Um, but the, as it stands now, if you go out and look at the can't find it. There's a product life cycle. Um, KB. I think Chandra, we linked to it last time we sent out. Last time we did this. Yeah, and we can do that again. So, it, you know, rather than taking my word for it, um, we'll send out. It's in here. Send out a link to this. It's for a different product, but we'll cover all the ones that are important. Um, and you can see exactly what M4 has to say about it. Um, and look at the entire policy. So here's the statement of direction. So talking about mainstream maintenance will be provided through at least April 30, 2026. But I think it's important to start planning now because I wouldn't want to be in a position where Infor's controlling my destiny. They basically come out and said, we're trying to get rid of this product <laughs> um, and we're going to set this date. And knowing that, you know, I would want to be strategically as an IT leader, as an HR leader, a finance leader in my organization, knowing how much the technologies have changed, the applications have changed, the users have changed, you know, bringing value to the business, being on a newer platform, you know, that's where I would want to be. Not, you know, it is a big investment. It is a lot of work. It's a big project to get there, but you still have quite a bit of time. 
and I wouldn't want to be fighting and guessing what in for, um, you know, how to take control of your destiny. And that's why I said, start planning and road mapping and talking about it as opposed to saying, well, maybe next year, maybe customers love to say, oh, that's two or three years away. And then two or three years comes, uh, oh, it's two or three years away. You know, start thinking about it uh, because you're going to have to do something. And I wouldn't want to be outdated in legacy technology. Uh, I didn't see any other questions, um, but as I said, you have my uh, emails here. You can reach out to me directly. Uh, Chandra will be reaching out with a, a follow-up email for everyone registered uh, with a copy of the content, a uh, link to the recording, and the KB article that we uh, just covered. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your afternoon.